First, I would like to answer you the question, what is cancer? Cancer is the uncontrolled growth of abnormal cells in the body. But how does such abnormal cells grow in the body? Let me explain you the process of cancer. <laughs> My name is Ai Shine from Cancer Education and Research Institute, formerly known as Cancer Research Simplified. Any normal cell requires nutrition, oxygen, and blood for healthy functions. Cancer cells are no different. However, because they're growing so rapidly, they need such essentials in excess. Cancer cells genome, or as we also call it, the total genetic content, has changed so much that it not only favors the rapid growth of such cancer cells, but it also helps them to survive under extreme conditions, such as low supply of oxygen and nutrition. The way they do this is because of their ability to modify their energy metabolism so that they can grow rapidly but also simultaneously reduce or minimize their need for nutrition and energy. If this wasn't enough, cancer cells can also develop resistance to specific chemotherapeutic agents. On the other hand, cancer cells can also escape the immune system or escape the immune system cells, which we also call tumor surveillance, and help them to grow further in the body. All of these factors are the reason why cancer is such a daunting and dangerous disease. Imagine that cancer cells are a blood-sucking vampire thirsty for blood. As long as cancer cell has a necessary blood supply, they are less likely to die. As you can imagine, the human body, which contains a lot of blood vessels, are a perfect environment for such cancer cells to grow. In fact, cancer cells try everything possible to ensure that they have the necessary blood supply. The body's process for developing blood vessels is called angiogenesis. Let me write that down. Angiogenesis. Angiogenesis. Cancer cells are pretty much hijacking this mechanism and they are redirecting the development of blood vessels towards themselves so that they can create their own blood supply. The way cancer cells are doing this is that they produce a protein which is called vascular endothelial growth factor or as we have also learned from our previous videos VEGF vascular endothelial growth factor by producing this factor by cancer cells blood vessels will be stimulated and new blood vessels will be developed and directed towards the tumor cell so that the tumor cell will receive a necessary blood supply. By cancer cells producing this growth factor, it will stimulate the blood vessels and new blood vessel network will be developed and will be directed and grow towards the tumor. As you can remember, the mechanism to develop blood vessels is called angiogenesis. angiogenesis. The system to block this mechanism is called anti-angiogenesis. Anti-angiogenesis. So there are many anti-angiogenic drugs that have been developed and one of the anti-angiogenic drugs that has been approved by the FDA and which is also currently used um, for treatment in several cancers, one of them is for glioblastoma multiform, the most aggressive type of brain cancer, is Avastin. Avastin is an anti-angiogenic drug that blocks the development of blood vessels. As I mentioned before, cancer cells have their own way of continuing their life cycle because of their changes in their genome, or as we also call it, the total genetic content. There are several genetic abnormalities that can contribute for cancer cells to develop. One of them is oncogenes. Oncogenes. In our body, we naturally have these oncogenes. 
oncogenes are overproduced or as we also called overexpressed in cancer cells or they can gain function or as we also call it gain of function so either they are overexpressed or they can gain function which we also call gain of function when their counterparts in normal cells which is called proto oncogenes proto oncogenes are altered so what that means is in our body we naturally have proto oncogenes but if they are altered by inner or outer factors either they can be overexpressed or they can gain their function so that can contribute for cancer cells to develop. The second one is called tumor suppressor genes or TSG. Tumor suppressor genes. TSG. Tumor suppressor genes. Again, we have naturally in our body these tumor suppressor genes as well as the proto-oncogen genes. Natural function of these tumor suppressor genes are to suppress the growth of normal cells so that they cannot grow rapidly and become a tumor cell. However, when these genes are altered, they no longer function as, as a suppressor and the cells can grow abnormally or uncontrolled and develop cancer cells. In normal cells or healthy cells, the tumor suppressor genes or TSGs help control the cell division and help damage the cells to repair themselves. However, if the damage is too great to be repaired, then tumor suppressor genes allow cells to die naturally or undergo apoptosis. As we mentioned many, many times in our articles on our website, apoptosis. Apoptosis, which is called cell death. However, in cancer cells, this natural function of the tumor suppressor genes are either down-regulated, as we say, down-regulated, or they can lose their function, as we also call it loss, let me write it down here, loss of function. Loss of function. So as you can remember, the way cancer cells develop through oncogenes are when proto-oncogenes are altered so that they are overexpressed, right? Or they can gain function. However, the tumor suppressor genes are the opposite. When they are altered, the expression of tumor suppressor genes are down-regulated or reduced or they completely lose their function. So it's kind of like a gas pedal and brake sort of mechanism that we have in our body. When they're altered, no longer cells are either naturally die and undergo apoptosis or they can regain their functions and become a cancer cell. So either way, if either of these genes are altered, that causes cancer cell to develop. There is a third factor, which is called telomerase. Telomerase. This is an enzyme, as you can see from the ending. The suffix is an ase. This means it, it is an enzyme. Enzymes are catalyzers of a certain molecular function. So telomerase is an enzyme. Cancer cells produce this enzyme, which allows cancer cells to override that process that normally limits the lifespan of a cancer cell. So the production or the expression, as we call it, of the telomerase enzyme 
by cancer cells contributes to an abnormally long life of a cancer cell. To help you better understand how these three factors contribute in the development of a cancer cell, I'd like to explain to you this way. If one or two, one or two oncogenes are becoming abnormal, then a tumor will be developed or a cancer cell will be developed. However, they will grow as a benign tumor. Benign tumor. Okay? If one or two, one or two oncogenes plus one tumor suppressor gene is altered, then a tumor that is growing or is developing is a low grade tumor. A low grade tumor. A low grade tumor means that they are aggressive in growing, however, they are not immortal and they are also not resistant to apoptosis or as we also call it cell death. However, if one or two oncogenes is activated plus telomerase is activated plus a tumor suppressor gene is downregulated or lost their function then the tumor that is being developed is immortal there it is a high degree of tumor it is immortal it is metastatic and is also resistant to cell death this also brings us to metastases which we'll be covering in another episode so I hope this was helpful to you. Thanks for watching. And if you have any comments or questions, please write them down below in the comment box. And if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and please subscribe to our channel so that you can be updated when we publish our next videos. And if you feel like donating to our cancer education nonprofit organization, feel free to do so on our website at canceredinstitute.org slash donate. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next episode. Take care.